I'm Gloria Moran and I'm Evelyn DeLutis and we'd like to thank Whitney and the staff at the Mansfield Public Library for inviting us to share our book Follow the Drinking Gourd which is part of the program of outreach for One Book One Community out of Bridgewater State University where when the same pe where many people open the same book they close it in greater harmony and along with the adult book, the grown-up book, which is called Freedom By Any Means, Gloria and I love to go into schools or places that want to learn about the Underground Railroad um, for children. And so we're here today to share one of the books with you. And there are many books on reserve for you to take out at the Mansfield Public Library if you want to learn more about the slavery movement and the movement north by these sla runaway slaves. And so today, the name of the book we're going to read is called Follow the Drinking Gourd. And if you're not sure of what a gourd is, they grow in gardens. Um, the slaves used to pick them and dry them out and cut an opening in them, and they could make a hole and tie it around their waist, and this became their drinking gourd, the, what they drank water, and sometimes they could even put food in there for themselves. So I brought a gourd for you to see today, just in case you wanted to know what it really looked like. And if you take a look at the gourd, and take a look at the sky and the Big Dipper. And there is the drinking gourd represented by the North Star and the rest of the Big Dipper. And so now we're ready to begin. Um, Follow the Drinking Gourd is written and illustrated by Jeanette Winter. And I'm going to do the reading, and Gloria is going to show you the illustrations, which I think are very, very good. <clears throat> Long ago, before the Civil War, there was an old sailor called Peg Leg Joe, who did what he could to help the slaves. Joe had a plan. He'd use a hammer and nail and saw and work for the slave master, the man who owned the slaves, on, a on the cotton plantation. Joe had a plan. At night, when the work was done, he would teach the slaves a song that secretly told them the way to freedom. Just follow the drinking gourd, he said. When the song was learned and sung all day, Peg Leg Joe would slip away to work for another master and teach that song again. One day, a slave called Molly saw her man James sold to another master. James would be taken away, their family torn apart, just one more night together. A quail called in the trees that night. Molly and James remembered Joe's song and they sang it low. When the sun comes back and the first quail calls, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. They looked to the sky and they saw the stars. Taking their little son Isaiah, old Hattie and her grandson George, Molly and James set out for freedom that very night. 
following the stars of the drinking gourd. They ran all night through the fields till they crossed the stream to the woods. When daylight came, they hid in the trees, watching, listening for the master's hounds set loose to find them. But the dogs lost the runaway scent when they crossed the stream. And Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and young George were not found. They hid all day in the woods. At night, they walked again, singing Joe's song and looking for the signs that marked the trail. The riverbank makes a very good road. The dead trees will show you the way. Left foot, peg foot, traveling on, follow the drinking gourd. Walking by night, sleeping by day, for weeks they traveled on, sometimes berries to pick and con to snatch, sometimes fish to catch, sometimes empty bellies to sleep on, sometime no stars to guide their way. They never knew what, to, what lay ahead. There was danger from men who would send them back and danger from hungry beasts. But sometimes a kind deed would be done. One day they hid in a thicket. A boy from a farm found them. In a bag of feed for the hogs in the wood, he brought bacon and cornbread to share. Singing low, they traveled on. The river ends between two hills. There's another river on the other side. Follow the drinking gourd. On and on, they followed the trail to the river's end. From the top of the hill, they saw a new path, another river beneath the stars to lead them to the freedom land. The drinking gourd led them on. The song was almost done. When the great big river meets the little river, follow the drinking gourd. For the old man is awaiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the drinking gourd. Then they climbed down the last hill. Down below was Peg Leg Joe waiting at the wide Ohio River to carry them across. Their spirits rose when they saw the old man. Molly and James and Isaiah, old Hattie and George ran to the shore. Under a starry sky, Joe rode them across the wide Ohio River. He told them of hiding places where they would be safe. A path of houses stretched like a train on a secret track leading north to Canada. He called it the Underground Railroad. It carried riders to freedom. The first safe house stood on the hill the lamp was lit, which meant it was safe to come. Ragged and weary, they waited while Joe signaled low with a hoot like an owl. Then the door opened wide to welcome the freedom travelers. They were rushed through the house to the barn, for the farmers knew there were slave catchers near. A trap door in the floor took them under the barn to hide until it was safe for them to move on. And then Peg Leg Joe 
went back to the river to meet others who also followed the drinking gourd. With danger still near, too close for ease, the farmer sent the five travelers on. He drew a map that showed the way north to the midnight road, to the next safe house, just over two hills. This time, James called the signal himself, the hoot like an owl. That opened the door to, the Quaker, to a Quaker farm. The travelers were led to a secret room hidden behind shelves. They rested here for many days and healed their wounds. Soft beds, full meals, new clothes, hot baths washed away some of their fear and pain. Isaiah smiled. When they were strong, they traveled again from house to house on the underground trail, still following the drinking gourd north. Sometimes they traveled on foot, sometimes by cart. The wagon they rode near their journey's end carried fruit to market and the runaways to freedom. At last, they came to the shores of Lake Erie. Molly and James and Isaiah, Old Hattie and young George climbed aboard the steamship that would, that would carry them across to Canada to freedom. Five more souls are safe, Old Hattie cried. The sun shone bright when they stepped on the land. They had followed the drinking gourd. Thank you for listening. I can't imagine how frightening it must have been for these slaves who traveled from the south to the north for freedom. There were just so many. We don't know who they all were. We don't know all of their names. But we thank you for sharing this story. If you'd like to go on YouTube, you can fo find the song, Follow the Drinking Gourd, and sing along. It's a beautiful song. And if we had our voices with us this morning, <laughs> we would sing it for you. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> no, but they'll be on this program still. <laughs> and also, your library, the Mansfield Public Library, has many other good books about the Underground Railroad that will help you even understand it more. Thank you. Thank you very much.
the great big river meets the little river. Follow the drinking gourd, for the old man's a waiting for to carry you to freedom. Follow. Follow the drinking gourd. Follow.